have two blinks, and Lazbra's on the Pele. So, the issue, of course, was that they went too hard for Pagon, they did not confirm the kill, and then Panatom on the Pele was able to run them down. Pele's just so good early game. She has so much damage getting two casts of Pyroclast on top of the fact that she can use her fuel for you know, extra damage, extra mobility. It's a big deal. So I really do want to see if they're able to find a first blood at level two. I mean, pop the, yeah, pop the shard. They've got claw shard as well. I'd be shocked if they don't use these blinks in tandem onto the Morgan with a claw shard prop, with the carapace shard prop, and try and go for first blood here at level two. They've got better clear as well. They are getting their first. And they're going around too. Lazbro goes long. Dardes straight down mid. Gotta be Pagon. And you have to keep your eyes on Lazbro. He's everything off to the side. They're Pagon, playing safe. Anatom, recognize <laughs> the scenario. Dardes is gonna go in, stunned out. Well, that's how things went awry last time. They thought they had the fight for the dragons and it was turned around. Netroid even yeah. under a little bit of pressure over and left. And so Trelly, it's the early game. And the Dragons maybe don't get exactly what they want, though can't be counted out. The Blink is still up. They've still got that advantage of, 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 and capability of finding a fight. But I have not seen the Warriors step up beyond the tower line too far. Or if they do, it's in an instance, as we just saw from uh, at least Panatom's Zygon, which is step forward, dash back as fast as you can. Yeah, they played it smart. I mean, I, I'm thinking Pagon said, I'm on the Morgan. I have no movement. I've got a stun, but it's not going to be able to get me out of trouble. So I'm going to stay back until we get confirmation on their relics. And once he saw a double blink, he said, yeah, there's no way I stay anywhere that's on the tower line, which is definitely the right call to make uh, in this situation. Just too much damage, too much immediate damage onto the Morgan. Does find the taunt, but Lazar isn't going to blink in. Might need some uh -oh. heal here. Artist should be fine for the time being, again, because of the pressure that Pele can provide. You can just run down an Athena with no with no dash there if there isn't a damage dealer right next to you that you have to worry about. Wall from Genetics keeps Vote and Might locked in. Double freeze. And a lot of damage bullying out Vote. Metroid didn't seem to get the memo, at least on target acquisition. And so it's been Mike who's been taking a majority of that damage. Shield buff was his goal, and shield buff he did scoop up. Vote walled off, though, and left by himself. Freeze used. Beads has to be the rebuttal. Seems like that's going to be enough to get Vote away here. Half health for both Dragons in the duo lane. And Genetics already showcasing exactly what this Ymir can do. All right, well, now we have two different avenues to look towards, right? You got the beads that you, we just saw Vote go down. We know Pagon's beads are also down, which has to be a topic of conversation. There are two Blinks and a Morgan with no beads. How many times this set have we seen Pagon die with those beads close off of cooldown? I mean, it has been many, many times. And you know that that timer, that 107 seconds is plastered in both Dardis and Lazbra's head. So I'm thinking positioning where the Morgan is at any given moment is going to be broadcasted to all of the J Dragons. And that's where those blinks need to be used. But if Hagon has learned anything from a best of five, it's that he is a target. He has been tried to be dealt with time and time again by the J Dragons. And he needs to be very weary about where Lazbra is at any given moment if he's going to step forward. Mike, gonna have Lazbra here. Blink now from the Pele, goes in, knock up on the Emir. Wall's good. And now with the Athena, you'd think it'd be enough, but a wall from Genetics creates a lot of He's space. Gonna die to tower. He's running as far as he can, and like you said, doing his best to deny they this. They lost him? Oh, he don't. Yo, Darn is still oh, got no. it! The damage, he didn't wait it out long enough, thought they were chasing him, they were on the XP camp. That's crazy. Not only did oh, he get the wall no. of the sentry, they didn't know where he was. Lazbra ulted towards Chester, he thought he was going right. And I think dying to tower was the correct call, but he didn't wait out long enough, so Dardis still gets oh, first blood no. there. That's crazy. He big brained him and didn't I even didn't know even it. didn't even connect that first blood. That's so much gold. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I mean, he could have backed, but dying to tower would have been prevalent to giving a free book of thought to Dardis already. I'm telling you, he didn't know how big brain he was. He's like, surely they're right behind me. I need to die right now. Nope, they had no clue, bro. You're out. 
he, honestly, there's there's maybe a world he could have backed over <laughs> there and gotten I away. Didn't, I didn't see how close the wave was. Yeah. Maybe the archers could have stopped his back, but either way, oh, man. that is worst case scenario. And that's going to live rent free in my head. I can't imagine for genetics. Well, that's right? the thing. I don't think genetics even knows that he was out, right? Like, he probably thought they were close. Oh, yeah. And for him, it's just, ah, well, they were going to get me anyway. Yeah. I, nah, maybe when he'll watch the replay back, he'll be like, wait, they didn't know? You mean Lazarus ulting towards green buff? What? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. But hey, first blood over yeah. the dragons, <laughs> and it's an early one. Even if it wasn't maybe the most explosive thing in the world. Speaking of explosive, Sot potentially going to be exploding the shield here, looking for damage. Stun maybe on the Nika. No, it's going to be Lazbar rotating in alongside Dardes. They pressure out Panatom. Jump forward from the Odin Cage down, and good luck getting out of this one. Kill to the Warriors on Lazbar locked down. Ymir wall up, Ymir wall down. Not much you can do about it. Dragons fighting around. Pagon low, Pagon gone. And that's exactly what the dragons needed. Panaton's too low, and the chase is good. Reach gets a little damage. Dardes needs something extra. Just won't have the cooldowns to make it work. Wall from genetics creates more space, but it leaves him out to dry. Support for the warriors. Tick one more hit. I have to admire it. Dardes goes for a blink play to try and get the kill on a backing, I believe, Panaton. Yep. Or Pagon, one of the two. It was Panaton. Pagon did die. Panaton yeah, was backing right underneath tower. Could not catch him out. And I understand, right? He left Nika and PBM to just get the – they're like, you guys have no mana, but you have to kill the Shamir, right? I'm just going <laughs> to leave you alone, see what else I can chase down. And now this is the start to the Athena mid that you want, right? This is the complete opposite of game number one where Dardes gets first blooded. Has no farm, has no presence on the map. Ulting in is only going to lose him XP. Just doesn't end up working out. This time around, 2-0. Uses those rotations impactfully and is able to essentially run the map. Even Pagon transformed into Dardes to make his rotation in. Had the opportunity to use that Defender of Olympus. But you got to turn back into the Morgan eventually. And when he did, he was able to get chopped down. Plenty of damage there. You know, Trelly, something that was... You know, a discussion in chat earlier, people were talking about, like, gods they wanted to see. And, of course, you know, inclination is to, to throw out your favorite gods right. in, in times like that. And I realized and prepared this as, like, a talking point for at some point today. Okay. That I'm pretty lucky because of my, let's say, top five gods. They're all Maui. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, before no? I, there I had favorite gods before, man. Yeah, sure, man. Ymir. I know you like Hebo. Athena and Hebo were on that list, and I consider myself super lucky that they're getting played as often as they are. But then Genetics had an O2 start, and I, st and I started feeling a little shaky about keeping Ymir on that list. It's not as fun as a talking point if it's just Hebo and Athena. But right now, they still have their opportunity to maybe try and prove things right, Pagon. Taunted in. A lot of damage. Oh my god. Coming in from the dragons, but it's a split fight. A little bit in mid and a little bit on Sot. One more hit. Someone's got to get him. No but one? the shielding, it's going to get him out of there. Instead, they turn things around. Nika is the one who dies in mid. Sot walks away, and the warriors seemingly get away with murder. And Panatom's not one to let it out to dry. Lazra. Not a lot of mana to work with. No health. Panatom waits until he goes around the wall, tries to get the vision. Movement speed disappears here from last one. How deep are you willing to go? Panatom looks the wrong direction. Thinks he's going towards the tier two in right. Instead, it's the tier two in mid. And if he would just wait a few seconds longer, he'd at least get the speed buff, but he doesn't know that. And the chase doesn't get him any sort of lead that he would have wanted. I mean, that's incredible because Lazbra, by all accounts, should have died in that cage was able to stall with his ult long enough to actually get the mid camps to spawn, to Soul Eater back up and heal. And then Sots just left out to dry. His team bailed on him. But he lives with one HP, jumps over the wall where no one can cover the option, and Nika is the one who falls down there? That's incredible that the Oni Warriors were able to make out with a good play for what looked like, I mean, a terrible start. The fact that Lazar makes it out with one HP there is disastrous. All the while, See the Jade Dragon still pulling ahead just a bit. Asad is attempting to steal this buff. Will not be able to grab it. But shows how unkillable this Odin is at the time being with just that Breastplate. Upgrade his Breastplate immediately, by the way. He took the, the, the Glyph and said, hey, I'm going to need this movement speed as the game continues. So 
I'm just going to grab it right away. Odd that someone spends that much gold just for the breastplate upgrade this early. Uh, and, and you can see how much it's set him behind, at least tier two so far. He'll probably back sometime soon. By a small skirmish over the totem will maybe give him the advantage he needs, but he hasn't been able to go back and quite equalize things out. Charlie, I'm going to ask the over under at this rate, right? 001, keeping things on, <laughs> on level with Nika. Maybe I'll have to hold that question because Lazbar wants a little bit more of a fight. Dashes in for Panatom, finds the damage. It's Mike who gets the last little bit there, but a kill nonetheless, and they might as well add two for the support. Double kill for Mike, 3 0 and 1. And a great play from the Dragons to pick up a couple kills on left. Should be a free gold for you unless Pagon's got something to say about it. He's walking up and Dardez is playing zone duty. There's no way the Netroid gets involved with there. Will be the Morgan watching slowly. There's some low health bars here too. Who does he turn into? Probably Pele. And that is the call. Can he find a kill is the question. Goes in for it. Immediately has the autos necessary to help out get a kill on Mike. Netroid finds that last weaved auto. Not enough there. Up into the sky goes the wrong. The snipes, they're good. All three shots and it's a great, great kill. But Netroid burns them down for stepping forward despite the play from Vote, despite the kill from the Dragons. Three of them disappear and the Warriors turn this fight around and pick up the Fury. Well, now it's Nika's turn to try and make something happen. Does have his ultimate. It's Sod who might just go in for the cage to zone him away. Can he find a cudgel? To go in for the steal attempt does not seem like you will be able to. Good wall from genetics, and it's the Oni Warriors off of a fantastic. I said Netroid wouldn't rotate in. I honestly didn't think he would. But once Pagon comes through, gets a great rotation into Lasbra, and is that tanky and is able to create that much space, yeah, you might as well walk in and gets a triple kill for his troubles. This Chernabog is a threat. All he has is Aussie, by the way. This man has one item. It's crazy. I mean, he just... He got a full executioner and tier two fail not off that back. And that's the, the thing, having just the Aussie, he's the only one, it feels like, look, we've seen executioner. We've seen a lot of Kinsize. In fact, that's been on the, the top of the conversation more often than not this weekend, is Kinsize equals win. Aussie, I feel like Netroid's the only one who's been going for it. That's the only item in that tree. Uh, others, even vote included, goes to the Devo's gauntlets. Uh, Petrelli. Uh, it's a positioning, and I'd love to watch it back, see the triple kill from his perspective, because the way uh, that plays out, I mean, I I'm so focused, at least personally, on, on the snipes that are coming through, that instead you get Netroid essentially free because of all the attention of the dragons was going over towards Pagon, and it's such a, a wide opening for him. He was, he was able to free cast there. I mean, again, Pagon created so much space. Luckily, Pantom was able to rotate and help him out as well. And I think Metroid's build choice has a lot to do with, you know, starter item selection. If you're going Death's Toll into Dev Gauntlets, you have no sort of attack speed. You're reliant so much on the stim from Chernabog, whereas Vote, he's got his own stim, right? He's able to use that Ramatu to his advantage and ends up helping out a ton. Sot has the cage, opts not to use it, and the Jade Dragons look like they're going to retreat here and just let the Oni Warriors cap this beacon. Mike's too weak, Phantom Shell not upgraded just yet. Trying to die for it. Just does not seem worth it. Slowly, Oni Warriors will be able to grab it. And it's actually Pagon who's going to go cover right lane while SOT is gone. Don't want to let that farm go away yeah. for nothing. So this is how wild the pace of this game has been. That was the first beacon. <laughs> that feels like it should be at least the second, maybe the third with the amount of fighting. 11 kills, 13 minutes. And not for lack of trying, it'd be higher otherwise. Even Sot's over here on left right now. And wow, the gold. Dead even between these two teams. <laughs> Excuse a little bit in favor of the Warriors, but that's going to change wave to wave. Shelly, I mean, asking for it, this is the exact kind of game four pace you want. And maybe a far cry from what you would expect when you see and go back to remember that a lot of people, what was it, 63% if I remember correctly, were, were leaning heavily over in favor of the Warriors. I don't think that's going to amount to too much with Solar Troll over here, but it's these, you know, the walls, I think, with the play we've seen from both of these squads has really showcased exactly what it can be. That triple kill, though, for the Warriors into the Fury. I mean, that's been the saving grace. Otherwise, this game's starting to skew dragons and, and get out of hand. Definitely so. 
I think that if that play is, it doesn't go as poorly as it does, and again, it was just a beautiful rotation in. I cannot believe that the Only Warriors even made that call to step forward, but because Lasper built so tanky, because he went Soul Eater into Contagion, Pagon was able to stall that fight out so much. But now that fight's over. Primal Fury is spawning in. We'll get the second iteration of that fight. This time I assume it'll still be the Jade Dragons with aggressive positioning with ward coverage, but you gotta look towards Sot. Hasn't really had too much opportunity to find massive cages. But there is no Phantom Shell available. Mike has, you know, really forewent upgrading this starter item. Prioritizing getting a bit tankier, helping out the team with his heals. He really does want to get that Phantom Shell online before this Gold Fury fight, though. I wonder how much gold he has in hand. See if he could do it just by going back. Yeah, he's got the gold to upgrade that Phantom Shell. And the Primal Fury just touched down. Hasn't went for it yet. Sot upgrades a Heroic Teleport. Could join behind at any moment in eight seconds once that teleport comes off cooldown. And there are plenty of wards on the left side of the map to do it. Now the question I have for you, Charlie, as serious as it can get, 001, tied 14-14 with Nika. How many butt bounces from Sot are we going to be getting? When do they start to factor into this? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> with, 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 without context, uh, if you guys are just listening. Oh, yeah, if you didn't watch Warriors versus Hounds, that sounds wild yeah. that I asked that. He's on the he's on the glizzy skin. He's a glizzy gladiator. And there's a special emote where he butt bounces. I'm Go glad on. you provided some context there. I'm just trying to save your job, man. I got you. If it makes you feel better, I was looking up. You, I think you saw me pull my phone out earlier to look up. I was trying to find a cinnamon, synonym for bouncing that started with a G so I could try to get it with, like, the glizzy yep. combo. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't one. No, not, not that we're aware of. <laughs> so, so far, none. When Sot feels unkillable and, he's, and, he, and he feels on top of the world, that's what we're going to start seeing that special emote come out. But at the moment... <laughs> Has not had the opportunity to do so, and this game is far too close, bouncing on a knife's edge to really be, I was going to say horsing around. I don't have a, a much better of a, you know, a phrase to describe what Sot would be doing in that instance. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it either. Myth was very good at those words, and I feel like that's like the, the fighting game community <laughs> in him more than anything. It was an interesting sight. I, I recommend it. Just for the, the hilarity of the moments, if you if you want to go back at some point, you can go to YouTube.com. You can hear us. Slash smite <laughs> bot and, of course, go over <laughs> and watch the, the Warriors hounds. But it wasn't in the face of the dragon. It was, like, slightly adjacent to the dragons until he's – what's I get, I'm going to use your terminology because, like you said, you're trying to save my job. Just glizzy bouncing, man. That's glizzy what, bouncing is yeah. probably better than just butt bouncing. Mm -hmm. Um. Special emoting. Yeah, that's the correct call. Using the... The VX... VX... Q? G. G. Yeah, it's VX key. Dragons get Pyromancer. Let's just resettle, get back into this one. And they get it without much of an answer. Primal Fury started up by the Warriors. Mike goes around the back. Has Dardes. The lockdown onto genetics. Damage seems to be there. But the rest of it just is not. The team hasn't responded just yet. Sot comes in. Sot has the cage. Just waiting to see when he's going to drop it. If he's going to drop it. If he even needs it. They have the damage. And he locks in vote. They kill off Mike. And it looks like the duo lane going to struggle a little bit. Chernabog is going to dash around. Up into the sky goes the ROM. And they just decide to ignore him. Nika goes down. And the front line for the Dragons disappears. Lasbra looped around the back. But it's not for help. It's to save his own life. Dardes goes down on the chase. And the Warriors... Lead now, eight to seven. Pull in, teleport from Panatom. He has the health. He tries to hold it. Sot leaps forward and gets the kill. And four disappear from the w Dragons. The Warriors run down mid, take a lead. Yeah, but you can still see Lazra hiding. He dropped a ward as well, just to see if this Gold Fury would be gone for. Primal Fury is definitely still a target. Will Lazra go in for the steal attempt? It seems like yes. Here comes PBM. They're the only two alive. And they've got plenty of ward coverage. It's just, hey, do we walk up with a pyro class or are we going to hide? Mike is the only one who's shown face so far. I don't think you want to fight here. You really just want to go in for a steal attempt. Primal. Dropped. Lazarus takes it. Does get dropped fully now. Reset. And we'll be healing back up. So objective. We get traded in a weird way. As we've seen Beacon's been up. And it seems like it's going to be the Dragons, mayhaps, that capture it. No, Nika's not going to hang around too long for it. 
And I think it's the threat the Warriors pose on the map. So there's not too much to do. Both of them are running over towards right. Maybe some ward coverage. I saw one get dropped by Lazra. Luchelli, the Warriors. I mean, that was a massive fight for them. And, and if you think about it, technically two in a row that happen over towards the Fury Pit. One that gets them back into the game, a triple kill for Netroid the first time around. This time around, four kills spread across the board. Uh, it gives them a kill lead, gives them a gold lead, and gives them the opportunity to start the Primal Fury one more time. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how long it's taken PBM to upgrade this this starter, right? The the Phantom Shell seems like it would have helped out in that team fight. Of course, Sot saved the cage for so long because it wasn't even necessary at that point. So maybe that's the call. Hey, we lost the fight anyways. We didn't need the Phantom Shell. Let's just try to avoid fighting until I actually do get the upgrade. But you're not out of the woods yet, right? This gold lead is not insurmountable. Nardez actually has a two-level lead over Pagon, who was the first target in that fight, right? He had to defensively turn into Panatom just to get out of the way, just to retreat after being targeted by what I believe was PBM with a with a Dardes old on top of him. Yeah, it was the Terra initiation. And look at the relic selection from the Jade Dragons. Four blinks and vote. That's the team comp. <laughs> they, they, they will be going in. It's also their band name. Yep, four blinks and vote. Hopefully performing after this set. It's a political band. In the draft show. <laughs> and they are just looking to initiate and win off that first fight, right? They're not looking for a drawn out engagement. They are blinking in. Hopefully everyone's dead by the time we've used these. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just me. I'm kind of surprised to see that they only went for one shell, if I'm honest. Like, you know, even if you weren't going to go Aegis, that was probably the next thing on my list because you know, you know Odin's going to have his walls up often. Genetics going to have their walls up often. Uh, and so it feels like maybe it could have been helpful. Do you, do you like the five? Or not? sorry, five blinks is too many. Four blinks. Do you like them? Uh, or is that maybe an overcommitment from the dragons? I'm not going to say it's too many blinks because you can never have too many blinks, but... Otherwise, your eyes get too dry. Exactly. The issue with this composition is that everyone on their team wants to blink in, right? They don't really have much choice. Dardes wants to be able to start the fight with a blink taunt. If Mike wants to get the most value from his ultimate, he wants to blink in and hit three, four targets. You know, Lazbro doesn't want to just use Volcanic Lightning and get aggressive. He wants to be able to close that gap, blink in first, and then see what happens. Pyromancer juggled, but the Oni Warriors still able to pick that one up despite Lazbro's presence there. So I, I don't hate it. I get that everyone on their team wants to get closer. They want to be able to get involved. But the issue, of course, is what if the Oni Warriors start the fight? If they're the first ones in, they put you in combat. Four of your team has lost a relic, right? You, yeah. You have lost that ability to close gap, to engage, and you just got to buckle down and fight. Wouldn't you prefer a shell, a sprint, a, a frenzy at that point? It is putting all the weight on the Jade Dragons to be the first ones in, to be the first ones to start the engagement. In the past couple fights, that hasn't really been the case. And I think, rea re wow, realistically, Blondie, and it's TBD as to whether or not it will work for the Dragons or not. But you would think Nika Dardes specifically are the players I'm, I'm thinking could have maybe erred toward one of the other relics you had mentioned and not lost too much, right? A blink taunt can be really nice, though. I'll just have to see how often Dardes gets that out, especially knowing that you, as an Athena mid, only have the breastplate for defense right now. So you could get shredded if you go too far, too quick. The taunt makes people attack you. Fire Giant's been started up here by the Warriors. It's already halfway down. They're going to go ahead and drop that in terms of trying to find something else. Dash, taunt, and then a great wall vote forced up in as well. He's dead. He's going to wait for us. And it should be the cage. And he's actually going to find a little bit more than just him. Forces the shell from the other side, but it does not matter. It's not a phantom shell just yet. It's only for the shielding, and it's not enough to save Vote's life. Dardes low, Mike low, both of them. Follow Vote into the ground and into the grave, and you might as well add Lazbra onto that. Now Nika, last man standing with Pagon and Sot chasing him down. The rest of the team looks over towards the FG. Panatom goes to push down right. And it is going to take a little while. They need some extra damage, but the Dia side rolls through. The Warriors take the lead. They take the FG, and they're going to push themselves forward. Taking a little while to get the Fire Giant. But appropriate tanking and now appropriate presence on the map means they're going to get more towers out of it. And that's what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Look at the blinks. Two of them weren't even used. 
Vote was dead the second he went up into the sky because he's going to land in a cage with no Phantom Shell. It just seems like the J Dragons put all their weight on this aggressive composition and haven't been able to play aggressively. They had to walk up. They were forced to fight in that Fire Giant pit. And the second Vote clicked ultimate, that fight was over because he knew he was coming back down into a cage, into a Typhoon. Lazbra and Nika went to the back line. They weren't even able to kill Panatom. He just beads. That was all that took for him to get out. This build that Lazbra has went for, yeah, he's got Contagion. Yeah, he's got Solitaire. He's trying to counter the amount of healing that can come through, the amount of sustain that the Oni Warriors have. Wasn't enough damage to even find a kill onto a full damage jungler. Now you're in a bad spot. Before, that, that first triple kill even, we, we, we watched Netroid tie the game up. Keep things even. Gold we went to right afterward, it was virtually neck and neck. After the second fight, it's like a thousand gold, maybe two thousand. Now, nine thousand gold. Ten thousand experience as well, most of them hitting level twenty on the right hand side of the screen. Nineteen, nineteen, and seventeen for Mika, Lazra, and Mike respectively. So a little bit of catch up to be done by the dragons in terms of experience. A lot of catch up to be done in terms of the gold. Charlie, we're going to be seeing the Titans go down left here in a few seconds. Sot's caught out alone. Has two dragons on him. Two it's more in take the jungle. so long to kill this man. And good luck to you. Yeah, it's not something they can commit to. In fact, they're even having to call it back now because the tier two already gone in mid, now gone in left. It means that knocking on the left side Phoenix are the Warriors, and the dragons have to set up a defense. Yeah, if they commit to killing Sot, they lose one Phoenix guaranteed push in two. That's how long it would have taken to try and burn through this Odin without vote there. So probably a smart call to give up on that one. The Titan ended up pushing out, so the Oni Warriors have to deal with that one first. But it becomes pretty easy to try and split up this team fight. I like the 3-2 split. They're not going for it just yet. They're going to back up, grab themselves a Primal Fury, and push in with their Titan. And when you've got a full health Chaos Titan pushing down left lane and a Runic Bomb for Sot, it almost guarantees one bird, right? And unless the J Dragon step forward and fight outside of their Phoenix, you're almost guaranteed to grab that left side Phoenix. The question is, do the J Dragons want to step up? Do they want to do a soft defense? Or do they just let their left Phoenix down and say, hey, we'll defend next fire. But there's just no way we can keep it alive. Doesn't seem like the only Warriors even want to push with their Titan, right? It's already there yeah. waiting for them. And they are back to base, spending up their gold. Seems like they're confident their firefight will be fine without it. And to be more specific about it as well, they've got the buff for a while. <laughs> like It's not like it's wearing off in just the blink of an eye. They're going to have it for another minute now before the Fire Giants even in the conversation of, of oh, okay, now let's wait for respawn, reset. The Chaos Titan, something that with the crew around probably wouldn't want to be messed with. Instead, Warriors back away, spend that gold as we had mentioned. Pick up Pyromancer, get a second Runic Bomb in pocket. And Shelly, 30 seconds or so. That means 28 minutes for the FG. Depending on how long the dance around the FG goes, we might get to see an enhanced Fire Giant between these two teams. And that changes the song and dance a little bit. If you're the Dragons, you don't want the Warriors to have an enhanced Fire Giant. If you're the Warriors, you still got five towers standing up. Your side of the map's actually looking pretty unscathed. Yep, and the, again, this time Mike will have the Phantom Shell, but the gold deficit, it's just, it's just too little too late, even with the ability to run away from Sot. I, I wouldn't put it past him to go for the first random cage he can find, one, two members max. Mike's going to pop Phantom Shell, right, because of what you said. You fear the Enhanced Fire Giant. Cannot risk losing someone to a cage. And you say, all right, back up. I'll come back in 50 seconds, and I'm going to do it again, and you won't have Phantom Shell. And that's the easiest engage the Oni Warriors could look for. Tier 2 Tower will be grabbed for absolute free. They're still stepping forward here. That tells me one thing, Gore. They're looking for Enhanced Fire Giant if possible. They would like to stall this one out, but the Oni Warriors, aggressive, yes. Patient, no, not so much. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they killed it at 29.59 just because they really wanted to fight. Right? Like they, they just saw an opportunity to go in and they didn't care to wait that long. I have to keep our eyes on them. Now they've got well, a few more seconds before the Fire Giants even back. And then on top of that, a minute till it's enhanced. So how patient are they? Lasper's still cooking. I mean, it's even had. Oh my god. Yeah, he's still cooking. He's going to sell that for an item, and it's not even going to be finished. He's starving right now. 
Look, it, look it's, he's just like a college student who had just moved out of his parents' <laughs> house. He's got to learn the microwave ramen is the way to go. It would have been done faster. <laughs> it would have been done faster. And for those of you who don't know what I mean, his recipe is not finished. Yeah. That's what I mean by he's still <laughs> cooking. I don't mean it, uh, yeah, his sturdy stew is, is not stacked up yet. That's what I'm talking about. Now, so Pele, the crowd control aspect of that, you've got the knockout. And it does hit multiple gods. But you're supposed to get to 10. I mean, like you're aiming for it 10 times. So that means that there's been a long drought of even just defensive knockups coming from Lazbra. Now, you've got offensive plays coming from the Warriors. Aggressively, Lazbra comes in. There's going to be a couple of stacks, or at least one more for him on the knockup. Cage is good. Phantom Shell gets him out of there. Vote into the sky. Snipes ringing true. He's looking for Pagon. Finds the second shot. Invisibility should help get Pagon out of there. So it's trades for trades, ults for days. Some relics used on either side. Enhanced Fire Giant on the board. The Warriors maintain control of the pit. But that was the Jade Dragons finally initiating a fight, and that's what I'm talking about, right? Sure, Nika gets caught out. The wall comes through, forced into the sky. He has to go up, but instead of leaving off Somersault Cloud, he actually goes in, goes on to Pagon right when Lazbra blinks in. And you're wondering, where's Netroid? I looked up. Dardes was 1v1-ing Netroid in the back line, saying, hey, there's no way this Chernobog is going to get through to shred my tanks. Pagon forced into both relics, and he had ult out at Susano. And Dardes still has blink. Nika still has blink. The target is clear. There is one carry that does not have relics on the side of the Oni Warriors, and it's the Morgan. Let's see if they can get to her. And it's a balancing act. They finally engage, and they only use one of the blinks of the four they picked up. But like you said, they maintain three. Which means they can engage again. Dardes, someone to keep your eyes Lasbra's on. Lazbra's going around. Combat. Lasbra. The one without be blink and no beats. Stun from Sod onto Nika. As they try to figure out both warriors and dragons how to crack this fight. Ult's coming back up. Relics, 80 seconds left before Pagon has his. 40 seconds on genetics. And maybe the most important one, actually, for the, the true safety of the dragons. That phantom shell, now 30 seconds before that one comes back. Pyro goes over to the Warriors. Genetics double bombed up on a Sunday afternoon. Fire, John, Fire Giant. It's going to need to start it up. Panatom caught out. Panatom has to use the dash a lot of it defensively. Tries to get away. Loop around, though, from Pagon. The cage is good. Nika gets the kill. But do they have the lockdown necessary to find anything? Pagon goes in, but Pagon gets shredded. The damage from the Dragons is looking great. Two already gone on the side of the Warriors. And Sot jumps forward to lead the way. Nika has to fall back, but the rest of the team is there. Taunt, good on the Netroid. Beads will not protect you here. The double dash gets some distance. The Aegis still there, but it's not going to get used. No safety and now the front line all that's left sought forced to back and an EFG laying and wait for the dragons but Trelli that's sketchy. they're too low yeah that's low health bars and Sot is teleporting in there's no way they go in for the EFG just yet it would take them a solid 15 seconds just to burn through SOT's HP with this health bar so I think it's the correct <laughs> call to not go in for the EFG they can reset get full HP and then step forward, Netroid won't be able to fly in for 30 seconds at the very least, but Pagon can turn into Netroid and join the fight in 10. That's going to allow a lot. Anatom respawning now, Pagon in 5. Waiting for that ult to come back for him. Until then, he's going to have to welcome the old-fashioned way. Fire Giant, half but health. No the runic bombs DPS. for the dragons. They've got two on the other side. Cage gets dropped. The fight is on. The Warriors want to make sure this goes their way. There's Pagon with the ult and the transformation. They come they in steal it. and they steal that one away. Now the Dragons forced to turn tail and run, but they just cannot escape. Vote with the roll forced into the sky and into their waiting arms. Snipes coming down onto Panatom. Does not connect on the last bit of damage. Instead, it's the Warriors looking great. They find the kills. They roll through the Dragons. Four of them gone and now run straight down mid. You Use this EFG and tie this set up. It was just too difficult. G burning through SOT's HP was not possible. They said, hey, let's just ignore Sot. We'll go in for the enhanced fire giant. Pagon flies through. Panatom was already there, and two runic bombs was just too much to try and contest. That Titan is certainly dropping down, and we are going to a game five, Gore. What a well-played fight.
by the Oni Warriors. They knew even if they lost three, they could stall that one out. And they held exactly where they needed to. And, and much like you highlighted, it's the health bars at the time for the yep. Dragons. If they were able to start that first EFG, you still have to deal with the Odin. But genetics doesn't make it back because of all the, the amount of time it's going to take him to walk. It feels P like... Pagon wouldn't have been there either. That, that teensy bit of time changes everything for the Dragons.